If your only offer is like $300 per month, you're trying to just sort of be like, it's all everything for the $300 a month. I think you're actually going to struggle. I think your churn's going to match your growth rate there because it's not attractive enough to do enough volume. This is going to be the year for RCS too, from a lot of the things I've been reading in tech in general, okay. because of the fact that RCS will allow more AI automation to be involved on the phones where yeah. it's all the quick replies and everything else that's already kind of in motion. So I can kind of see that going online. Strategically, this is what we're moving into a season I call it like barbells where you're going to see a lot do well on very low ticket and then a lot do well on very high ticket. All right, everybody, and welcome back. We are back again with the Start From Scratch series. As always, you know, we have Matt Sino here and we've been showing you all kinds of tips, you know, how to basically start a consulting business from scratch, how to literally start a business with absolutely no money, what things to say, how to DM people the right way. Like literally we've given you a bunch of assets. And today we're going to kind of talk about 2026 and what you should be selling and why and kind of like the approach just because Matt's got so many reps and he's seen so much and he's got all the agencies. Matt, what do you think is definitely the things to focus in on and how do I go about selling the things to focus in on? So give me at least three yeah. things so we can keep this pretty structured and how to go about selling each one. Yeah, I think strategically, this is what we're moving into a season. I call it like barbells where you're going to see a lot do well on very low ticket and then a lot do well on very high ticket. The mushy middle is kind of getting squeezed out even more so. And so this is where you just kind of have to like, trust me when I say this, if I'm thinking of like offers that I want traction on, either am I intentionally low barrier, low relatively low ticket, or am I high commitment, high ticket? So either one of those can go well. Personally, like I think about it like a value ladder, but it's just going to be a steep curve is you can go from very low ticket, low commitment and, you know, immediately filter to those kind of like high ticket, high commitment offers there. So a great example that I'm going to see, I think we're going to see a ton more in 2026 is AI empowered website redesigns. I think the ability now to say, Hey, I made like, you could pick 10 a day and be like, redo 10 websites a day, send them out and say, I made this new website. You can have it 500 bucks or whatever, let me know if you want it. You're seeing a lot more of that. I think there's a lot more opportunity there. There's higher leverage ways to build. And so website redesigns, I think is gonna be a really great low ticket, low commitment. And you can decide, do they have to have some hosting or are you literally saying, you know, you, you could kind of mix and match and find different ways there. Even high level can do WordPress hosting. You can now do HTML direct websites, all sorts of stuff. And you can do lovable. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've been promoting and actually this has been one way that our staff is making money. So before, we were doing a lot of cold calling. So with the cold calling now starts, hey, company so-and-so, we just designed a website for you. We'd like to get your second opinion on it. And the customer immediately starts flipping out. We're like, I didn't ask for it. I know, I know. It's like, we're one, we're training our people. We just wanted to show you what it's like. If you're interested, then you can buy it. But can we just get your take on it? And it kind of gives that very low end approach. We're having a lot of people just call in. And honestly, the skill set of this particular sale is very low key. We are selling them. It's funny you said about 500. We're selling anywhere from 500 to 1500. And we're building them in Lovable. We're building them now in the new AI builder that you can still activate in labs in Go High Level itself. And more importantly, you could sometimes take a site. I don't know if you know this little cheat code. You could build a site in Lovable, which is incredibly at designing sites. I don't know what they did. We actually went head to head with four of them with Replit, Lovable, Bolt.new, and Base44. We gave them the same design and Lovable literally across the board. We did it live last week. It was amazing. It like literally killed it. And then what we did is we took that, took a picture of it, went to the new the new one though, not the old AI builder, but the new AI builder and literally yep. said, please replicate this site, colors, brand, words, everything to the exact. And it literally did. It, I mean, did it come close? I would say 85% close and get this, it did all the sections, all the different elements. And it wasn't just like a image based thing. It literally wrote, wrote the whole thing up. So Again, real big opportunity. So anybody watching, go watch that live and you can kind of see us how we build it. And then you can also transfer that over. So, okay. So we got our low ticket building websites. That's awesome. Totally yeah. agree with that. What else? What else we got? Cooking? I'll flip to the high ticket side of it. This is like ongoing. I think sophisticated reputation management. I think people like more and more businesses, even local businesses are going to be looking for kind of Reddit based like reputation management, like there's a big gap there where Reddit has with their deal with Google, they constitute so much now for organic search and they're like by extension, sort of the, the large language model results and reputational analysis 
And a lot of local businesses are just blind to this. So like you go in, there's all these subreddits for like communities or cities or something like that. And people saying like, who's the best carpet cleaner? Who's the best plumber? Who's somebody you like? I think in these places, Reddit in particular, I think there's opportunity there. Now, I don't think they're going to be looking for Reddit reputation. I think they're going to be calling it like AI or like basically answer engine optimization. So this AEO space there, I don't think they're going to be expecting it as low ticket. I think it's going to be a higher ticket ongoing commitment kind of a thing. I won't be surprised if people are paying thousands of dollars, kind of like the back in the day from like ads where you could be like, uh, Hey, $3,000 a month. We run your Facebook ads kind of a thing. I think there's going to be more of that $3,000 a month and we'll run your AEO optimization. I think the Reddit social proof piece of it is going to be one component of it, but I think you're going to see more of that AEO optimization from like a consulting standpoint, because businesses that are already running marketing, they understand that their results are heavily dependent on the reputation. Like people will know them, but then they'll like kind of search them and gut check it in other places. So two things on that, and I want to get your thoughts on it. One, you know, so high level did roll out the video testimonial. We've been actually pushing as many as we possibly can. The fact that it is pretty easy out there. There's also video we just did on the YouTube channel, literally how you can market this. And then you can add to the bottom line because now not only can you collect Google reviews, but you can also collect video reviews. And I think that that's going to be a big push. So Just based again on what Matt's saying, I think it'll be a really good add-on for anybody doing those services also just to kind of like streamline it there. The other thing that I don't know if people know about, but, and Matt, I don't know if you know this or not, but you know that Google has been secretly building their artificial reality kind of um, base. And just because I'm in an island and I have like, there's a little town here, they already have Google Maps that you can now, I don't know if you know or not, but there is a little tiny button that's like a little camera button. Yeah. And if you put your phone up and you put Google Maps on, you hit that little camera button. You can see the reviews in your experience. You can see the review right in front of you in the experience and it's starting to pop up on the left and on the right of the screens. Yep. So probably prediction in the next two years, especially as the meta is getting cheaper the meta glasses, I think are a hundred bucks now and yep. they've made the lenses smaller. The only thing is that the battery life doesn't last as long. Yeah. Once they solve for the battery, which is like very close, I think the glasses are going to be like the next wave of trying to get there. So people that are not on Google reviews to get ahead of this like artificial reality thing are going to be really missing out. And if you literally look up Google reviews and you look up artificial reality, they have a sample on their website actually showing you exactly what it is. And their plan is to add like menus and reservations directly from your phone. So they're already talking about it. It's live. Like literally, I literally went in the town. It was so cool. The arrow shows up in front of you. So as you're pointing onto your phone, you'll see the arrow going in and all of a sudden, reviews just start popping up. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And they have it in New York and a couple of the big areas too. I think it's going to be big for that experience there. And it's just important for us if you're on that side, potential, you know, higher ticket, higher commitment offering there of who's it for. So if the business is one where the customers go to the business, absolutely, it's going to make sense. If the business is one where the business goes to the customers, that actually is like a miss. And that's where mm-hmm. you kind of see the divide there. If the business goes to the customers, focus on AEO sort of like this could even be like next door on uh, yeah, Reddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. things that work that the business isn't willing to do. If the customer goes to the business, then Google reviews are still going to be super. I think all of it's relevant. It's just like, what do I anticipate the trend to be? Where do I anticipate the need to be? And the kind of felt experience of like businesses are all about this. I think the other piece there, and so you can pair these, any of these problems you could break down into a low ticket version and a high ticket version. So the, I'm still saying, I see the trend of it's going to be a barbell. There's going to be a lot more low tickets and there's going to be like an immediate lift. If your only offer is like $300 per month, you're trying to just sort of be like, it's all everything for the $300 a month. I think you're actually going to struggle. I think your churn's going to match your growth rate there because it's not attractive enough to do enough volume and there's going to continue to be a constraint. Just the felt experience of inflation. We saw this this year. I think more businesses, they'll report on this, but I think more businesses felt a tightening in 2025 and it's made them really conscious going into 2026 with the government shutdown where the cash like literally just got sucked out of the marketplace. That cascades through, right? It's like yeah, the sure. government employee doesn't have the money to go and buy the groceries. So the grocery store doesn't have as many funds. So they don't hire the kid who doesn't buy the pizza, the pizza shop, you know, it's like, it just took cash. It cascades over and over. Yeah. It just cascades through. And so I'll say this too. If you're hearing this video, you're watching right now and you're like, man, 2025, I didn't hit my goals. You're not alone. I've talked to more business owners that flatlined or had a decline after multiple years of growth. And so this has been 
probably a harder year, but that's like it's defining. Well, usually money doesn't disappear, it just shifts, except for when the government shut down. But <laughs> I think they've already stated there's going to be what do they call it? Like quantitative easing. There's going to be more money printing. And so the thought is going in 2026, you're going to have, I mean, who knows? I don't have a crystal ball, but signs point to a weird space where maybe rates start to push down. There is more cash in the system, but the felt experience is, I mean, it's sad to say it, but it's kind of like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And so you're like both sides of those, you're going to see offers going really well. Your folks optimizing for low cost solutions or low cost versions of the solution. And then your folks that are catering to folks like businesses that are, they really want nothing to do with it. They want it mostly hands off. And so you can go a little bit more premium there. And then if you want, you can run, this is what we do is we run very low barrier, low ticket entry point to get people into the ecosystem. And then we run, it kind of jumps pretty steadily there in our space. Yeah. So you're offering Bethel and Swirls. They come in at a one very low ticket price, and then there's the opportunity for them to advance for yeah. the people that can't advance. So then you're offering kind of both sides and you're avoiding that weird middle, like you mentioned before. I think that's really- and I think you'll see more of this. So if you're the agency owner, like the potential for you is if you wanted to be like, or if you're like in that zone, you could gain a lot of traction building an audience, being low ticket, and then charge 2000 bucks an hour. And you might be thinking like, no one would ever pay $2,000 an hour. I'd be like, nah, actually, if you get hundreds of customers a month and it's like, that's the only path is it's like, hey, I bought this thing for a hundred dollars and it was great and phenomenal and awesome resource, but I want to talk with you. I think we're going to see more folks in that space where it's like they're you know, business will do $30,000 a month, but it'll be like, oh yeah, I sell a thousand hundred dollar things, or is that too much? You know, I sell five hundred hundred dollar things. And then I sell a handful of kind of like consulting relationships for the folks that want that, that higher end. So I just anticipate that potential. And this is why also we'll see a growing trend of subsidized relationships here on YouTube is a great example. Creators are being compensated, not from the viewers. So like the actual marketplace, YouTube in this case, is subsidizing relationship. You'll see it on Meta. You'll see more space in that way. I'll go with one more offer that I think is going to trend and pop off well. So I think because of websites, I think that's going to go really well. I think on the AEO space, it's a higher ticket because it just needs more energy. Well, it has a lot of potential, but it's not quite as easy as like, I don't say SEO, but it's not as basic. You know, people want to see, am I getting leads from ChatGPT? Like, is it really optimizing results there? So it's probably going to need more stuff, like I said, Reddit or other creative strategies. I think another entry level foot in the door, you know, I actually think it's iMessage. This is weird to say, but I just saw, you know, we know somebody, Rob Bailey came out with this thing. Have you seen this, Nina? No, no, no. Okay. It's blue sender, something like that. There's like, yeah, yeah, blue sender. yeah, yeah. It's the whole iMessage. It's iMessage, but it is a direct connect for the iPhone. And I think there's more businesses that are just going to be like, I want automation just for my iPhone. Like they don't want, again, they're like, I don't do more than 50 leads a day. So they're like, I just want, you know, something that's quick. It's easy. There's no A2P. And this is where it's interesting as an agency. This is why I thought it was intriguing with Rob's thing is it's made to just sort of like be the bridge between your high level. So like, imagine that as the offer is, Hey, we'll automate your iPhone so that like you can put AI between the text and, and like a lot of service providers, like that's it. They got their phone. They don't want a different phone number. Like this is fine. But right now they're not responding to text. They're too busy on the job or whatever it is. And the ability to be like, no, it's cool. Plug in your iPhone on your Mac to your CRM and we'll put a bot behind it and you don't have to worry about it. So now it's like, hey, it might be a couple hundred bucks a month, but you're not paying a penny per thing. You're not dealing with A2P. You're really not, I don't know, it's like not quite fancy. Well, a good example. Send Blue is a company that does this. They charge $1,000 per month to facilitate this process on behalf of folks. So they're like, hey, you want your iPhone or not even your, they say you want an iPhone to run text messages charge a thousand dollars per month. And they, what do they do? They own the phone number, they own the phone, they own the device there. Like you could facilitate that process and you'd be like, okay, $30 a month for the phone line, buy an old iPhone for a hundred bucks, run it on a virtual Mac machine for another 30 bucks, charge the business a thousand dollars. So you could charge the business a thousand dollars a month if you just want to do that. So I think, I think there's going to be more of that. I can see that. I think this is going to be the year for RCS too, from a lot of the things I've been reading in tech in general. Because okay. of the fact that RCS will allow more AI automation to be involved on the phones where, you know, you can create an own greeting and your greeting would have like, hey, no, no, it's not here. 
here's a button for leaving a message. Here's a love button for this. And like, yeah. it's all the quick replies and everything else that's already kind of in motion. So I can kind of see that going in line. So that does make a lot of sense. And kind of wrapping it up, just to kind of give you a quick little recap. So yeah. low ticket or high ticket, don't be in the middle. Low ticket, we've already talked about it, of what you can do as far as developing the websites. Again, we did it last week on Friday, we did it live. So you can see us doing a comparison of how to do it. Then we also said the high ticket, very high end reviews, not only like your normal review channels, but things that are going to get artificial. I think it's artificial engine optimization. I think it's answer. They call it answer. Answer, answer, answer engine answer optimization. optimization. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Where, you know, the bots are going to search for who the best person is. And then if you have yeah. enough things in Reddit or in all these different channels, you're going to get recommended first. And that I think that's a game everybody's going to be trying to play on the higher end, extensive side of people that have the money to do this because it does require a little bit of capital more so and a lot of management because you have to be in all those places in order to really pop up. And then we have a possible iMessage kind of like third idea where you can go in and again, generate there. So, and being cognizant of the time, because I know we have a hard stop in the next two minutes. I know Matt's like eager to say something else. So I'll let you go. Matt. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm excited. It's good as we're wrapping up there. I was just like a point of clarification there and maybe it didn't exemplify it. I see both sides of that happening in iMessage. So Rob's style is a one-time fee. So he's charging just like 500 bucks, connect iMessage to your CRM and then stop paying me kind of a thing. So that's that low friction, low barrier. You're like, oh, that's, that's great. 500 bucks, no brainer. And then I see one of them's blue sender, send blue. Send blue is thousand dollars per month. So it's like in the same zone of iMessage, I see the low ticket and the opportunity. Ticket. And then I see the high ticket going as well. So I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And I think both are doing fine. Like I see both getting traction there and they're just catering to different customers. And it's ironic as I saw, well, somebody we both know took the low ticket thing because it's not the managed piece there. And they're facilitating it on behalf of clients to recreate the similar experience to the high ticket version. So either that like pure product or education, low ticket, one-time commitment, not a lot of stuff there, or like designed to reduce costs, like use your own iPhone. You're like, Okay, that's fine. Or like a managed service thing where certain businesses, they've got a big sales rep team to them. The idea of 10 grand a month to like have managed iPhones for all of their sales reps, they're like, this is great because they want the blue bubbles to like message to come through and their value, their opportunity value is greater there. So I kind of see to clarify that I was seeing it as like both sides coming through. Yeah, exactly. So and again, not that middle ground, but yeah, to your point, yeah. And I know people that operate on both. So to your yeah. point, it's definitely a hot mark because both are doing well. So we know that it works out pretty good. But with that being said, you guys now have a little bit of an idea of what to do for 2026. And Matt, as always, thank you so much for coming on and we will see you all in the next one. On the next one. Bye.